Hello and welcome to Bournemouth RC. Uh, tonight we'll be doing another uh, upgrade video. Uh, we've got the RPM rear arms. We have got the RPM front bumper that I'm going to be fitting to the rear. Um, I was going to be fitting the Italian front bumper to the rear as well, but it doesn't actually fit. Um, so I had a quick look at that earlier, so it doesn't fit, so I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, so we've got the rear bumper and the rear arms to do. Um, as you can see, currently my diff's still out. Um, it's over here somewhere all in absolute bits covered over just to keep it from getting dirty um, so that'll be enough of video hopefully the parts are actually going to come tomorrow um, so the parts link to the arms and to the bumper will be in the description with the part numbers and a link to where I got them from um, so we're going to do a nice simple little video about how to change them over uh, I'm going to start with the arms so uh, one of the things I am actually going to be doing as well is taking off this rear bumper and I won't be putting it back on um, I don't like the rear bumper and I'll show you why in a minute um, the actual design of it means that it is susceptible to bending the screws and I'll show you in a minute because one of mine is actually bent okay so that one's not too bad but this one here has actually bent quite badly you might be able to see that in a video it's not coming out straight at all so that screw there and i'll try and get the video to focus on it okay as you can turn that you can see that that is quite badly bent um now that is actually from jumping and when you land land down on the back if you land the ground coming in towards the back there it hits that bumper and bends those screws down so my advice is to take that off and um, get some shorter screws which i've got here uh, i've got the button head ones i'll put a link to, in, to them in the descriptions as well um, shorter screws to go in and lock off the um the pin holder for the rear arms to stop that from being able to move anyway okay so now to get that pin holder out it actually does sit in to the rear part of the chassis so I'm going to take that off as well now as you can see with mine um, I have the RPM skid plate there now that's not going back on because I'm going to be using the RPM front bumper at the rear and it has the skid plate as part of it uh, my chassis brace that goes through here is already loose as well from when I was doing my diff so now actually that comes completely apart and my drive shaft's already out as well so just be careful if you've got your drive shaft in there so I can move that to one side now this holder here slides off which can then allow you to get to the smaller aluminium one And that just slowly works off there now these pins go all the way through so grab a hold of the pins and slide them out like that that will release the rear arm so that there releases that rear arm so you can get that off of the frame there um you need to do your uh, sway bar now mine's off the other side because of where i got the diff apart so simply unscrew that That sway bar then pops off out of the way. We turn this over now. I can undo the screw that holds the bottom of the shock pin in. So that just needs loosening off a little bit. Small pair of side cutters just to get in behind that and put it out. That takes the shock off. And then finally, we're onto the bolt at the end there. So 
So as you get that bolt, there is a nut on the other side. Find yourself a small spanner or a pair of grips. Just hold that nut. Now mine's particularly awkward to undo because I've actually bent it. Um, so I will be ordering a new screw for this, but I will straighten this one until that arrives. Now be careful as you undo this that you don't lose any of the washers. Obviously the nut as well. And mine's going to be particularly awkward to get out because it is bent. Now you can see I've managed to bend that quite well, so I will order a new part of one of them. Uh, but for the minute, I will just straighten that. And I'll do that in a minute. So here then you have three washers, a thick one and two small ones. The two small ones came off the side that went towards the front of the car. The thick one came off the side that went towards the back. So I'm going to lay them there so I know where they go. We then also need to take out... The screw and that one there is for holding the bottom of the shot eye link and we also have down here our droop screw so that one will also need coming out and obviously when we do this we will then have to reset our droop screws on the new arms Okay, so there's the old arm, nothing wrong with that arm, so I will be keeping it as spares. Now, with the new arms, obviously there is two sides to these arms. Okay, so where your shock went in, uh, make sure you've got the holes at the top. Now they are double-sided because actually if you flip them over, they've got the holes in the other side as well. But they do have a right and a left. So, this one will be for this side, which is obviously the right when you turn it over, and then the left one will be over there for that side. Now, the easiest way to check on that is for the droop screws. When you've got it the right way up, which is that way up, the droop screw needs to go through that bottom part there. Okay, so let's put that in now. For the minute, I'm just going to have that just so it's only just poking out the bottom. I will put, I'm going to put them into the highest shock position, which is the closest to the centre. Now, these screws are a little bit fiddly to first get in. And you want to make sure you get them nice and straight. And that's why I'm doing it while it's off. Once you get them started, they're fine. So that goes into there. Now we're ready to get this back on. So before I do that, I need to straighten this screw. Now I've got that reasonably straight. It's not amazingly straight. Um, I am going to replace it, but it will do for the time being. So first of all, then we go just through the arm, get the thick washer on. Through the hub. Now the tricky bit is to slide those two washers on. Line it all up. There we go, it's gone through. Find the nut for the other side.
Okay, so that's now on there. Now I will put my shock in quickly. Now again, I'm gonna add that into the top hole there, which is closest to the inside of the chassis, so I've got the most height. Obviously, if you put it in the other one, you can lower it a bit. Put that through there. Now, I'm not going to fully tighten this. I'm just going to loosely tighten it to pinches because I want to adjust the droop. Um, and I'll do that by lower, taking the shots off in a minute. So, and then come up to here. Find where I put the pin. Slide the pin all the way through. and that's gone into there ready for the next arm to be done so I'm going to do the same to the other side and actually that's come quite nicely out of there quite nicely out of there lots more smoother that one than the other one um, so do the same to the other side and then we'll come back okay Okay, so now I've got the other rear arm into position. I will lock off pins from that and then go over the top with the hinge pin lock there. Now this is where I had the bent screws um, for the rear bumper and I'm going to change now to the smaller button head screws to go into there.
Okay, so now that's in place. The only thing I need to put on that I had on before was the sway bar. Now I'm only going to put one side on. I'll put the screw in there so I don't lose the screw on that side. I'm only going to put one side on because I have the diff out, obviously, as well. I've got the drive shafts out. So if you weren't to have the drive shafts out, you will need to put them back in as you put the arms on. That goes through there. Obviously the other side would come all the way around and go up through the other one as well. Obviously I'm not putting that rear diff back on tonight. I've got to fix it first. So that'll be a job for probably tomorrow night if the parts come. So, finally, bring the chassis back over. Now, obviously as well, when you get to this point, make sure you've got your rear drive shaft in. Um, if you are taking it all completely apart, <clears throat> now this is where I'm going to be putting on the RPM rear bumper. Okay, so it's important to remember as well, the rear bumper comes with a set of longer screws, but where I had the rear skid plate on there, that also had the longer screws, so I use the same screws. So, rear bumper's arm on, arms are on. Now, the one last important thing to do is to adjust your droop screws. And I did a previous video on this about why and how to adjust the droop screws. Because if you don't, it can cause you to lose a lot of shock ends um, and break a lot of shock ends. So, if you pull out that, now if your arm can go below the full length of your shock, that is the full length of the shock and as you can see there, that arm can go miles below. Now when you hit the wheel at the top here, that will cause that to push down and snap the bottom of that shock um, eye link. Um, and I had two go, I had an RPM one, I had the standard one go, before someone actually said to me, have a little look at that, see if they're coming down. So to adjust that, go into your droop screws behind. Wind those droop screws down, and you will see, as you wind those down, just got to get it to hit the chassis, that arm is coming up. Now, you need your arm to be just a tad higher than that hole there. 
Now, it's also important as well to think about force. So if you were to push that down, that still goes a bit below. Now, don't worry about going a little bit higher because when you've got the weight of the car sitting on the wheels anyway, that will force that down. So now that can't get to the end of that shock, which is what I wanted it to do. So lift that back in. Lock that off, and I will now move around and do exactly the same thing as the other side. So, pop that out, and as you can see, that one can go all the way down there, and that shock is right up there. So, get into that droop screw. If you can't find it, when you're looking at the car, if you look from the side towards the cup, it's right next to the cup. So, again, a bit of force on there. That's still lower than where that shot can go to. A little bit more. And we are there. So, Shock up and in. Lighten up the lock screw. Just lift it up. Okay, so now they're adjusted so that if you do get a knock, you're not going to reach the end of your shock travel. Okay, you've got a little bit of reserve travel left in them. So you've still got the full range of movement and don't worry about it being a bit higher because actually when you get the weight of the car on it will sit about there anyway so exactly the same over here full range of movement and it won't go past the maximum point of that shock travel which is what we want so that's the rpm rear arms done the rpm rear bumper um next to come on the video um we have a video on the front arms uh, we had a video on repairing the diffs um, and putting the diffs back in. I'm going to repair the couple of gears that are broken um, as well as reshim the diffs internal and external into the housing um, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, so that'll be in that video. We'll have a video on soldering the XT90s, which I use. Um, and also, as we go through those videos, I do have a new set of uh, bearings for the car. So I will be doing them as we go through as well. So that's it from Bournemouth RC tonight. Um, if you like the video, subscribe and you'll see the next videos, front arms, um, diffs, XT90s, bearings, um, and then hopefully at the weekend, if I get it all back together, we'll be out for another bash um, and you'll see the video over that. So thank you very much and good night.